जमुना चीरा वन चारमुना चीरा वन चारे जय राधा माधव कुंज विहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय राधा माधव जय राधा माधव जय राधा माधव जय राधा माधव जय गौरानी चाय जय गौरानी चाय जय गौरानी चाय जय गौरानी चाय जय जय प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु पार प्रभु पार राधा माधव जू की जय प्रभुपाद की जय जय ओम विष्णु पर परमहंस परिप्रचा का चार्य अश्वथर सत श्री श्रीमान शिवाइन ग्रेस भय चरण अरविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद की इसकॉन प्रतिश आचार्य जगत गुरु श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोट वैष्णव वृंद की जय नमाचार्य हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम सिंह हो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कर था शिवा श्री गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद गिरि गोवरान की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय नवदीप सिंह माय बोधाम की जय गंग माई की जय जमुन माई की जय भक्ति देव की जय तुलसी महारानी की जय श्री हरि नाम शम कीर्तन गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय निताय को प्रेमानंदी हरि Oh glory to the assembly devotees Oh glory to the assembly devotees Oh glory to the assembly devotees Oh glory to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga Oh glory to Sri Lakshmi
thấy So we're reading from Shima Bhagavatam, Canto 8, chapter 10, text number 7 to 25. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dikarinam the great elephant who could go everywhere. Arudha mounted on Susubhi became beautiful to see. Swarat Indra Jata just as Shravat flowing Pasravanam Waves of wine, wine. Udaya Adrim on Udaya Giri Ahapati, the sun. Should have chanted the shloka first. Aravatam Tikarinam. Arudha Susubi Swarat Jata Swarat Prashravanam Udayadrim Mahapati Arvatam Dekarinam Arudha Susubi Swarat Jata Shravat Prashravan Udaya Giri Mahapati Hervatam Dikarinam Arudha Susubi Swarat Jata Swarat Parasharanam Udaya Giri Mahapati Aruraha Sushi Bishwarat Jata Swarat Prasavanam Udaye to the Mahapati Evaratam Jata Swarat Prasavanam Udayadri Mahapati. Any messages? Ai Rabatam Dikarinam. Ai Rabatam Dikarinam. Udayadri Mahapati. Dikarinam Adura Sushi Bisvarat Jatashvarat Prashavanam Udaya Dremahapati 
ಭೈರ್ಭತ್ವಾಂಧಿಕಾರಿಣ ಯಾಪ್ರಶಾನ ಉದಯತಿರಿಂಪಕೆ ಭೈರ್ಭಾತ್ಸಾಂಧಿಕಾರಿಣ ಮಹಾಪತಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಐ ಪರ್ಪೋಟ್ ಬಾಯ್ ದಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಸಪೋಜ್ ಚಾರಣ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿದಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದಿ ಕೀ ಜಯ So I read from 7. Text 7. The sounds of the conch shells, bugles, drums, berries, and the hamadis, the kettle drums, as well as the sounds made by the elephants, horses, and soldiers <coughs> who, were on both, who were both on chariots and on foot were tumultuous. On that battlefield the charioteers fought with opposing charioteers infantry soldiers with opposing infantry the soldiers on horseback with the opposing soldiers on horseback the soldiers on the backs of elephants with the enemy soldiers on elephants in this way fighting took place between equals some soldiers fought on the backs of camels some on the backs of elephants some on asses some on white faced and red faced monkeys some on tigers and some on lions in this way they all engaged in fighting o king some soldiers fought on the backs of vultures eagles ducks hawks and bhasha birds some fought on the back of timingillas which can devour huge whales some on the backs of sharabas some on the buffaloes rhinoceroses cows bulls jungle cows and arunas others fought on the backs of jackals rats lizards rabbits human beings goats black deer swans and boars in this way mounted on animals of the water land and sky including the animals with deform- deformed bodies both armies faced each other and went forward o king o descendant of maharaj pandu the soldiers of both the demigods and the demons were decorated by canopies colorful flags and umbrellas with handles made of valuable jewels and pearls they were further decorated by fans made of peacock feathers and other fans also the soldiers their upper and lower garments waving in the breeze naturally look very beautiful and in the light of the glittering sunshine their shields ornaments and sharp clean weapons appear dazzling <coughs> and thus the ranks of the soldiers seemed like two oceans with bands of aquatics <clears throat> uh it says how he the beautiful uh the light of the glittering sunshine their shields and ornaments and sharp clean we- weapons became dazzling <clears throat> so they have their we have some for when radamada was hati prikram they made some elephant dresses he has that bit in that decoration in front with generally some moons on it and suns <coughs> so that was the idea in in, in the battle they polished so brightly that you get uh, in front of the sunshine so when the enemy is attacking the the reflection of the ornaments bright dazzling ornaments they can't see the can't see the uh, soldiers to fight with so they have all these uh, brilliant uh, decorations and ornaments and to affect the other's eyes they can't see properly 
From that battle, the most celebrated commander-in-chief, Bali Maharaj, the son of Birochana, he was seated on a wonderful aeroplane named Vihaisa. O king, this beautifully decorated aeroplane had been manufactured by the demon Maya and was equipped with weapons for all types of combat. It was inconceivable and indescribable. Indeed, it was sometimes visible and sometimes not. Who else had a plane like that, airplane? Who else had one? In Krishna book? The airplane, it would sometimes on, on the sky, sometimes on the water, sometimes, sometimes invisible, sometimes on a mountain. Huh? Huh? Salva, yeah, Salva, yeah, the mystical. I think my demon built that one also. Same like that. Ah, it was inconceivable and indescribable. Indeed, sometimes it was visible, sometimes not. Seated on that aeroplane, under a beautiful protective canopy and being fanned by the best of the Chamaras, Bali Maharaj, surrounded by his captains and commanders, appeared like the moon rising in the evening, illuminating all directions. Seeing Bali Maharaj on all sides were the commanders and captains of the demons, sitting in their respective chariots. Among them were the following demons, Numuchi, Shambhara, Bana. These are famous demons you read throughout the Krishna book, the fight, try to fight with Krishna. But they're very powerful. The, the demons were created by, before the demigods. So actually they're more powerful than, de, than demigods. Oh, they can, you can say they're superior in, in, in age. They appeared first. <coughs> Bana, Banashura. Viprachiti. Ayomoko, Dvimurtha, Kalanabha, Praheti, Heti, Shankashira, Kapil, Megadundubi, Taraka, Chakradash, Shumba, Nishumba, Jamba, Utkala, Arishta. Maybe the, the <laughs> Arishta is a source of that. Arista demon. Uh, Arista Nini, uh, Tiru Radipa, Maya, Maya, the son of Puloma, the Kaliyas and Nivatakapacha. All of these demons have been derived of their share of the nectar and they shared merely in the labor of churning the ocean. Now they fought against the demigods and to encourage their armies. They made tumultuous sounds like the roaring of lions and blew loudly on conch shells. Balabit, Lord Indra, seeing this situation of his ferocious arrival, rivals, became extremely angry. 25. Sitting on Ayurvata, the elephant who can go anywhere and who holds water and wine in reserve for showering on Lord Indra, Sorry, for showering, <clears> or <throat> Ivati, you often hear that he showers. I think he gave a bath to, uh, was that was Shravi, wasn't it? Anyway, no, that was Indra, yeah. Indra's horse, he gave bath, a shower to Krishna after the Govardhan leader. Aravata. Lord Indra looked just like the sun rising from Udayagiri where there are reservoirs of water, purple. On top of the mountain called it Udayagiri are large lakes from which water continuously <coughs> pours in waterfalls. Similarly, Indra's carrier, Hayurata, holds water and wine in reserve and showers it in the direction of Lord Indra. Thus Indra, the king of heaven, sitting on the back of Hayurata, appeared like the brilliant sun rising over Udayagiri. <coughs> I'm going to go on because it's a very small purple. Surrounding Lord Indra, the king of heaven, were the demigods, 
seated on various types of vehicles and decorated with flags and weapons. Present among them were Vayu, Agni, Barun, and other rulers of various planets, along with their associates. The demigods and demons came before each other and reproached one another with words piercing to the heart. Then they drew near and began fighting face to face in pairs. O King, Maharaj Bali fought with Indra, Kartikeya with Taraka, Varuna and Heti, and Mitra with Priheti. Yamaraj fought with Kalamba, Vishwakarma with Mayatanva. See how they paired off equally. Maya, Vishwakarma is the architect of the demigods. Mayadamba is the architect for the demons. And Indra is the king of heaven and he's fighting with <laughs> Bali who is the king of the demons. <coughs> <coughs> Vishwakarma with Mayadamba, Tvasva and Shambhara and the sun, the sun god with Virochana. The demigod Aparjita fought with Namuchi and the two Ashwini Kumaras brothers fought with Vishwaparava. The sun god fought with the 100 sons of Bali Maharaj. The sun is god very powerful. He's fighting 100. He, uh, the 100 sons of Bali Maharaj headed by Bana. Bana Shur. And the moon god fought with Rahu. Rahu. Demigods controlling air fought with Paloma. And Shumba and Nishumba fought with this supremely powerful material energy, Durga Devi, who is called Bhadrakali. Baba. She's insurmountable, but still they're fighting. O Maharaj Prikshit, suppressor of the enemies, Harindama, Lord Shiva, fought with Jamba. And Vibhabhashu fought with Mahishwara. Ilvala, along with his brother Vatupi, Vatapi, fought with the sons of Brahma. Dhurumasha fought with Cupid, the demon Utkala, with the Matrika demigoddesses, Brihaspati with Sukacharya, two priests, and Shani, Shani Shacharya, Saturn, with Narakashur. The Marutas fought with Nivatakavacha. Uh, the Vashus fought with Kalakiya demon and Vishwadev demon fought with Puloma demons. And the Rudras fought with the Krod Habasha demons who were victims of anger. All these demigods and demons assembled on the battlefield with a fighting spirit and attacked one another with great strength, all of them desiring victory. They fought in pairs, hitting one another severely with sharpened arrows, swords and lances. They severed one another's heads using weapons like bushundis, chakras, clubs, rishtish, patishash, shaktish, amulkash, prakash, praswadash, nistrimash, lances, parigas, mudagras, and bindipalash. The elephants, horses, and chariots, charioteers, infantry soldiers, and various kinds of carriers, along with their riders, were slashed to pieces. The arms, thighs, necks, and legs of the soldiers were severed. Their flags, bows, armor, and ornaments were torn apart. Because of the impact on the ground, the legs of the demons and the demigods, and the wheels of the chariot, particles flew dust violently into the sky and made the dust cloud that covered all directions from outer space as far as the sun. But when the particles of dust were followed by drops of blood being sprinkled all over space, the, cloud, it's, the, clouds, the, du the dust cloud could no longer float in the sky. Severe battle there. Purport. A cloud of dust covers in, in the entire horizon, but when the drops of blood sprayed up as far as the sun, the dust cloud no longer could no longer float in the sky. The point to be observed here is that the demigod, or, that although the blood is stated to have reached the sun, it is said not to have reached the moon. 
Apparently, therefore, as stated elsewhere in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Thirty-eight. Huh? There was only a little purport there. Huh? No, I'm going. I, I'm. I've already passed. I'm going to th thirty-eight. I know that. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> you can read it again tomorrow. We'd like to hear it. Uh, apparently, therefore, stated elsewhere in Srimad Bhagavatam. The sun, not the moon, is nearest. Is, is the is the planet nearest to the earth? We have already discussed this point in many places. The sun is first, then the moon, then Mars, Jupiter, and so on. The sun is supposed to be 93 million miles above the surface of the earth. And from the Srimad Bhagavatam, we understand the moon is one million six hundred thousand miles above the sun. Therefore, the distance between the earth and the moon would be about 95 million miles. So, if a space capsule were traveling at the speed of 18,000 miles an hour, how could it reach the moon in four days? At that speed, going to the moon would take at least seven months. That a that a space capsule on the moon excursion had reached the moon in four days is therefore impossible. Hare Krishna. Well, Prabhupada is being quite practical here. He thought, of course, when Prabhupada was saying they never went to the moon, he, he was meeting with so many um, different personalities and even interviewers on newspapers. You say they go to the moon, there's life on the moon and things like that. Uh, uh, but that's all kind of a little bit esoterical. But Prabhupada will bring it right down to a practical level. Look, here, this is, these are your calculations. You're going 18,000 miles an hour. It should take seven months to go to the moon. That's very practical. Uh, but still, then, bewildered. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada was always traced to the Bhagavatam, he never deviated. On when, whenever the Bhagavatam said something, he never deviated. <coughs> and the, the whole world was watching this moon, moon landing. It was in 1970-something, maybe 1970 or 71, something like that. The whole world was watching. It was a, it was a And uh, Prabhupada was also watching while he was taking his massage. They think, uh, they bought a television for him and he was having his massage and he, he was watching. Not very much interested. But. <laughs> then he would have the master come and stand in front of the television and massage his head so he couldn't see anything for it sometimes. <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, then they actually landed. And the whole world was, and Prabhupada said, well, so what's happening? He said, well, first of all, the, the film went a bit fa phasey, then it kind of cleared, and then you, the, suddenly they were on the moon, and you could see them walking, and they were jumping in slow motion, and uh, because of the gravity there. And... Uh, uh, Prabhupada said they didn't go. <laughs> right at that time, the whole world was saying <laughs> they got a big victory. They didn't go, Prabhupada said. Not possible. Uh, so Prabhupada wasn't phased by uh, 
the reports and everything else. He probably was stuck on Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, Heavenly Planet, he said, you cannot. Ravana tried to go there, he couldn't make it. And he was, he was powerful. <clears throat> so, uh, they, he, Prabhupada pointed out, they, they cannot go to the moon. And uh, he said, Prabhupada said, any people there? Any, any Martians there or moons? He said, no, any, any animals? No, any trees? No, no birds? No, no. <laughs> it's not the moon planet they're on. <laughs> they must be somewhere else. One time he said it could be Rahul. They, they went into Rahul. Or otherwise he said there was another, maybe another planet there. So they arrived. On. And... Uh, Uh, this uh, Purusha, Purusha Tom Das, disciple of Srila Prabhupada, he was assisting him. And uh, he couldn't accccept it even. And he said, look, but Prabhupada, they've landed. We said, we got it on television. And Prabhupada would tease him over those few days. They were, everyone was talking about it. He said, oh, Purusha, he, he, do, he, doesn't, he doesn't think that, 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 that they didn't go to the moon. And he would tease him. And one time they were... Uh, a Jamuna was cooking out something, I think, and the kerosene stove caught on fire. It was blazing up and everything became black and there was soot everywhere. The whole kitchen was full of soot, black soot. And so Jamuna rushed inside with Purusha Tom and they tried to put the fire, put the fire out and everything like that. And then they come out the room to see Prabhupada and the Purusha Tom was covered in soot of black everywhere. And Prabhupada said, oh, Purusha Tom, you've been to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you come back covered in dust. <laughs> and, uh, but he couldn't take it, actually. And he told Prabhupada later, he said, I, can't, I just can't ha hack it, you know. But the whole world is saying, so it's, I, I, you know, I, I feel I've got to leave. So he actually left Prabhupada <clears throat> because of that. And Prabhupada said, I can understand that he's, he, he's leaving because of what I said. That's okay, he said, but I can't understand why, if the Shastra says why he's leaving. If the Shastra says he's leaving, what? <coughs> huh? Yeah, I can't understand why he's leaving. I can, I can understand why he's leaving because I'm saying it. That's okay, Prabhupada's taking a humble position. But I can't understand why he's leaving when the Shastra says they, didn't go to, they can't go to him. <clears throat> and in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also says that I, I am Shashi. Shashi Shashi is another name of the moon. Shashi Bhushan. <clears throat> so Krishna is known as, the moon is known as Shashi. <clears throat> and in the 15th chapter uh, of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I, I become the moon, I become Shashi. So it's directly Krishna. And from me, the moonshine, from my moonshine, well, I supply all the juices in all the trees and plants and subjis. Otherwise, nothing would be juicy. But due to the moon's influence, he's supplying the juice of life in all the... So Prabhupada said, here is a moon planet. It's supplying all the juices of life for the whole entire universe. But the moon itself is dry dust and some rocks. <laughs> How is it possible? <laughs> but the planet is, that supplies all the juice is itself a barren, dry, dusty place. It didn't make sense. Prabhupada's so clever. <clears throat> anyway, the battle is raging on. I'd like to read something else that we already passed. I, didn't, I wasn't here at the time. I don't know if I'm going to repeat but this is in the uh, uh, ninth chapter. Uh, the Lord incarnates as a Mohini Murti. And text 18. <coughs> Translation. The Mohini Murti has appeared. 
Her attractive nose, cheeks, her ears adorned with golden earrings made her face very beautiful. As she moved, her sari's border on her breast moved slightly aside. When the demigods and demons saw these beautiful features of Mohini Murti, who was glancing at them and slightly smiling, they were all completely enchanted, purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakabhati Thakur remarks here that the Mohini Murti is the Supreme Personality of Godhead in a feminine form and that the Goddess of Fortune is her associate. This form assumed by the Personality of Godhead challenged the Goddess of Fortune. The Goddess of Fortune is beautiful, but if the Lord accepts the form of a woman, he surpasses the Goddess of Fortune in beauty. It is not that the goddess of fortune, being female, is most beautiful. The Lord himself is so beautiful that he can excel any beautiful goddess of fortune by assuming a female form. And this is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's uh, commentary also. Get, Translation and commentary. Gazing on the form of the Lord, resembling the friend of Lakshmi, whose face had beautiful ears, nose and cheeks, gold earrings, the cloth falling from her breast, the devatas and the demons became enchanted by her smiling glance. Purple. Though the Lord is the friend of Lakshmi, he became her female friend. Though Narayana is, a, uh, Narayana is the most beautiful among males, you, Lakshmi, should not become proud and think that you are the most beautiful among women. I, the Supreme Lord, am also the most beautiful among women. To prove this to Lakshmi, he showed his form. She had golden earrings and a beautiful nose. So here is pointing out that uh, that here the Lord saying he's he be, he's Vishnu Tattva, but he expands as a female, and he becomes more beautiful than the goddess of fortune. Uh, the Gopis are goddesses of fortune. Lakshmi and Gopis, they're also goddesses. Radharani is the supreme goddess of fortune. So who is the most beautiful? Krishna or Lakshmi or Radha? Huh? <laughs> Both. Both. But here Krishna says he is more beautiful. Hmm? Krishna is more beautiful. Hmm? Yeah, okay. Some, not everybody is saying that. <laughs> what about Srimati Radharani? Madana Mohan Mohini. She is more beautiful than. Mo, ma, uh, Mohan, Mohini. <laughs> Any others? Huh? Goranga. Yeah. yeah. Prabhupada said that uh, Goranga is more beautiful than Krishna. Uh, he's half, half. Half Radha, half Krishna. So Krishna is more beautiful, Goranga is more beautiful. Radha is Madana Mohana Mohini, she is more beautiful. Rajanja. You voted up. And uh, you know, going on and on and on about Krishna's beauty, sweetness, and his beauty, and, and it's stated that uh, he is Bhagavan and he has all the populace and the full and no one is equal to or exceeds him in any of those offerings. I thought, oh, God, this is confirming what the Nani was. Who said that? The only thing that the only fly in the Said that she might be 
<laughs> yes. Vaikuntha Narayan is much more beautiful than Lakshmi. But in Braj, Radharani for the Vaishnav there is much more beautiful than Krishna. I will. <laughs> so this is Prabhupada's opinion in his book, Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila, first chapter. For the verse you have to find out by yourself. I mean, speaking to the devotees. <laughs> so both, both are more beautiful. Oh, that Narayan is more beautiful in Vaikuntha and in Braja, Radharani is more beautiful. This is what Prabhupada says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 4, where uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is speaking about the, the beauty of the, the opulences of Krishna and Shimati Radhika, and that even Narayan is so much attracted to Krishna's beauty. So, this is to show that Krishna is most beautiful. But in Braj, for the devotees of Braj, Srimati Radhika Prabhupada is saying, is much more beautiful than Krishna. Very well. On Tuesday, Pankajanga Prabhu is giving Russian Bhagavatam class, and when he's commenting this uh, Mohini Murti's beauty, he said, um, Krishna is more beautiful than Srimati Radharani because Radharani is a manifestation of Krishna's internal energy. And Krishna is the, he is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. So he's more beautiful than Srimati Radharani. That's what I heard on Tuesday from Pankajanga Prabhu. <laughs> Someone else? Perhaps we can speak rasa and in terms of tattva, but when we speak in terms of tattva and, and, and really kind of strip away transcendental emotions and really look at what Shastra says, ultimately in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Aham Sarvasupra, I'm the source of everything. So, and, and he even himself also says, any, any beauty you see out there is as but a spark of my splendor. So even if we take it, from a rasa point of view, that Srimati Radharani is more beautiful than Krishna, we may remember that whatever beauty she has comes from him, because everything comes from him. So whatever beauty she may exhibit that may be even more beautiful than Krishna in Vrindavan ultimately does come from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Maybe it's my speculation, but they could also just compete uh, in beauty with uh, each, uh, one another. Radharani and Krishna, just like when Krishna sees Radharani, his beauty is increasing more and more. And when Radharani sees Krishna, her beauty is increasing more and more. So it may be, well, it's my speculation, but it could be like that. <laughs> Radha and Krishna are one identity, not separate identity. Hmm? Radha and Krishna are one identity, not separate two identity. And in Rig Veda it is said, Radha and Krishna together are most beautiful. Very well. They are one, the Shakti Shakti man. <laughs> she is saying there's no difference between the... Someone else? I 
mean to say that beauty cannot be measured by words, mean to say that one should calculate anyone's beauty through his nature. The outer seems is very beautiful. What is, if he is ugly in nature, it should not be considered that he is beautiful or handsome or anything. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. We had a few, a few, a few, I think the most popular one is that Krishna is the Shakti man and Radha is the Shakti. So therefore, Keshav Ramadhi said, you can't separate the Shakti, the Shakti man. The Shakti is the, takes his shelter on the Shakti man. That's the Ashraya of the Shakti. Without, uh, but without the uh, uh, Shakti, there's no meaning to Shakti man. Uh, without Radha, there's no meaning to Krishna. Without Lakshmi, there's no meaning to Narayana. Because uh, just like the the sun, its Shakti is heat and light. If there is no heat and light coming from the sun, what is the meaning of the sun? It has no meaning. We wouldn't be able to see it because there's no light. We wouldn't be able to feel the heat because it's not displaying its so there's no meaning to it. So similarly, God, without his Shakti, has no meaning. If Krishna is alone, that's practically my Vat philosophy. <laughs> Krishna alone. Uh, who is it, the Pushtimag? I think Pushtimag? Nimbaka. Even though they're one of the four Sampradayas, Prabhupada said, be careful of their philosophy, because if you trace it out towards its end, they come to Krishna alone. And the Hamasa Vashtra, everything comes from him. Uh, but the, the, the other go, uh, Vaishnavas, uh, they're accepting that Krishna is more complete with his Shakti, he's incomplete without his Shakti. So a complete picture of God is Krishna along with all of his different potencies. That's a more complete picture of God. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I asked Pankajangri, he said, nectar of devotion Prabhupada describes there's a, there's always a competition between Krishna and Radha. Krishna sees that uh, the gopis are so beautiful, so he becomes more beautiful. And then they think, oh, Krishna's become more beautiful. We should become more beautiful to, to serve him like this. And like this is a constant competition, <laughs> ever expanding, going on. So that, that, then we see that sometimes Krishna Krishna is more beautiful, sometimes Radha is more beautiful. <laughs> he's both. He's, he's Radha and Krishna together. Radha and Krishna together. See what else I found. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, when Radha left the Rasa arena, they were having a Rasa dance, Krishna left, or Radha left. Krishna went out to search for a way to do that. He can create millions of Radhas. But because, she, <laughs> because of her attraction and beauty, Krishna himself left. He left all the others. He went to see. Okay, yeah, Madana Mohan, he is the attractor of Cupid, but Radharani is Madana Mohan Amohini, he's the attractor of the attractor of Cupid. So therefore she is more beautiful then. 
So, we can conclude in, in uh, Tattva, Krishna is mo be most beautiful, but in Rasa, Radha is most beautiful. Oh, two, we had two, two of these. <laughs> in Tattva, then Krishna is more beautiful, but in Rasa, Radha is more beautiful. Uh, Krishna's, uh, Prabhupada says that Krishna alone is actually not so beautiful. But when he's surrounded by all of his potencies, he's very beautiful, especially when Sri Radharani is there. So we can also conclude that without Radharani, Krishna's beauty doesn't have much meaning. <laughs> And here is the conclusion, Keshavi Mataji gave, or one conclusion. In the Rig Veda, quoting from the Vedas, in the Rig Veda it is said, of all beautiful things, Madhava, along with Radha, is the most beautiful. Shiva. Radha Madhav Ki? Thank you. Shri Mabhagatam Ki Jai.